are again starting another adventure. So we are dropping off the car here at the hotel and waiting on our shuttle to go to Dulles Airport and guess where we're going? We usually try to avoid this kind of weather but we're going to Iceland. There's so many cool things there and we can't wait for you to see um, what we're going to do there and experience and we'll be so happy to share it with you. Okay, we're here in Reykjavik and um, it's very cold. You can see it's windy. We had to put the hoods up today. If you know me, I hate to screw up my hair, but uh, vanity is going to lose out to being warm. We're getting ready to go into the Viking Museum, which is cool because I found out some of my Irish and Scottish uh, genealogy started with the Vikings invading those countries. So uh, we'll see if we see anyone here that looks like me. <laughs> so here we are in downtown Reykjavik. Um, this is the main shopping street behind us. You see some of the nice uh, uh, designs here on the houses. It's mostly a modern city, not many older buildings, but it's still a very nice shopping area. Um, it's very cold today, about 32 degrees and very windy. So as you can tell, we're all bundled up. Um, let's take a look here down the main street. This is kind of nice, nice place to shop right now. It's um, late morning. It's still very quiet around here. Uh, but in the afternoon, the other day, it was quite, quite busy. So last night we went on a, on a ship to go out and see the uh, Northern Lights and we did see them. Unfortunately it was too choppy to take a video uh, because it was very blurry and uh, we have some pictures we will put in into the video here and then this afternoon we're going to go to the hot springs. So we'll, we'll try to see if we can take some pictures or video there if it's allowed. We're here at the Sky Lagoon, about to get our spa in the heated natural waters. And um, supposedly you could buy drinks there. And then afterwards you can go to a sauna and get a massage. So we plan to thoroughly enjoy this. By the way, it's 32 degrees outside. So I hate the thought of when we're gonna get out of that water, how chilly it's gonna feel. <laughs> it's beautiful here. Thank you. We're in the Sky Lagoon and I must tell you it feels wonderful. The air is cold. You can see the steam coming off of the water. It's about 32 beautiful. degrees today. Beautiful. <laughs> Freezing cold and very windy. I think this is the first time I've been warm the entire trip. <laughs> <laughs> so that's the entrance. That's actually where you come out um, from the locker rooms into the lagoon. And there's different places and different rooms where you can go for sauna and massages and Beautiful. things like that. Obviously, we're not going to take the camera too far out because we're in the water. But um, it looks amazing. Okay. <laughs> so here we are inside the Sky Lagoon. This place is absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's huge. It's got a waterfall over there. Um, obviously, it's got a bar. You can have uh, wine and beer there under the cave entrance is where the bar is. And uh, right behind us is kind of an edge. It's like an infinity pool. Um, when you look, you can you can look down upon the Atlantic Ocean. It looks like the, uh, the pool here extends all the way into the Atlantic. It's pretty amazing. And uh, when we get too hot, over here, we go through that door and we're gonna have some spa treatments, some massage, some salt scrubs, some saunas, uh, everything to relax and refresh. By the way, it's 32 degrees outside, so it's freezing cold and very windy, but um, it's, it's bearable as long as you're in the water. Gorgeous, my favorite part so far. 
Here's Stefan braving the waterfall. <laughs> Woo. Woo. Nice. He's brave. <laughs> Here he comes. Woo. The first hot waterfall I've ever experienced. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It's not quite five o'clock and the sun is almost setting, but we're enjoying this beautiful sunset here, looking out over the Atlantic Ocean. Gorgeous. Right. We and uh, hundreds of our friends. It's kind of like in your head until you put it down. Do you have any carry things back or just always in your Oh, yeah. Okay, the sun is setting and we are unfortunately getting ready to leave. It has been a beautiful experience. Probably my favorite experience of Iceland. Unfortunately, everything in the world has to end. But this end, yeah, this one every good thing soon. comes to an end. <laughs> So we're here in this huge greenhouse in uh, the southern part of Iceland, out in the country. And uh, they're growing these tomato plants hydroponically. They come out of these little boxes here and they're fed with water. So you can see these water hoses going in. And then the roots just kind of wrap around the bottom. Quite amazingly, these ha happen to be cherry tomatoes. And they grow here year round. And um, we have another video. We will put a part of that in of a lecture they gave here. Look how far down these go, row after row. Um, they actually import bumblebees from warmer parts of Europe. And they have the bees here to fertilize the plants. Um, and um, or pollinate the plants anyway. And they have to import new bees every seven weeks because uh, that's their lifespan. Um, so it's quite the operation. Everything is computer controlled, humidity, temperature, everything. And the entire greenhouse is uh, heated with geothermal energy. So everything is completely um, green, literally green and efficient. They also have a great uh, little cafeteria here where you can uh, get anything made of tomato. Um, tomato soup, Bloody Mary, tomato beer, uh, tomato ice cream, all kinds of different things. How was the tomato soup, honey? It was delicious, and I'm usually not a fan of tomato soup whatsoever, but it was really good. Here's one of the boxes that the bumblebees come in. Um, this one's still closed, luckily. Um, they're quite busy. They're anxious to get out and start work. So here's some boxes that are open for the bumblebees, and uh, they have uh, several dozen boxes of these, but they say the bumblebees are smart enough to find the way back to their own box and they know uh, which box is their home. We're at a greenhouse in the middle of Iceland. We just had a tour of this wonderful greenhouse facility. Um, we had tomato soup in there. It was really delicious. They supply uh, tomatoes to Reykjavik, a lot of local stores. They do these bus tours and um, they, it, they have uh, boxes of bumblebees that they buy to keep everything pollinated, everything growing well. <laughs> and um, if I lived here, I'd have to work in a place like this because <laughs> they have all this greenery around you and it's nice and warm in there too. And, Nice restaurant with all kinds of tomato dishes, like tomato apple pie. I mean, who ever heard of that? But uh, it was a great tour, and we're off to see a geyser, I think. Yes. And I'm not sure what else, <laughs> but we'll let you know. Hey, we are here in the hot springs area. And uh, we have a geyser behind us. The name is Stolka. Uh, it goes up every seven minutes. So we should have maybe three or four minutes before it goes off behind us. Uh, there's numerous other geysers or at least hot springs around here. But geysers themselves are very rare. There's only a handful of them in the world. Old Faithful, of course, is one of the most fa famous. And we have this Stolka here. There's also an old geyser. It was actually a little bit behind here that has stopped uh, 
um, coming up since the 1980s and that name was originally Heiser and um, that was the original geyser and that's what the word geyser comes from. So it comes here from Iceland and it's actually an Icelandic term. So hopefully we'll be able to capture this for you and uh, have a video of that later. We're waiting for the geyser to up. There it goes! Way high! Wow! That was amazing! This place is amazing, quite otherworldly with all this fog and smoke everywhere, geysers all around. And then there's also some majestic mountains here in the background. Very pretty. So this is the original geyser. Um, every geyser has its own personal name. The name of this one was Heisra, which is the Icelandic word. <laughs> Uh, and that's where we get the English word geyser from. Um, it's now dormant since the 1980s, so it doesn't erupt anymore. Instead, uh, the new one, Stroka, uh, started since the 80s instead. We're going to make one more attempt to see this geyser erupt and to maybe capture the entire, hopefully 30 foot high plume. Um, it's supposed to go off every seven minutes, but seems like today it's suffering from premature eruptions. It's been going off every four to five minutes. It's really hard to catch it just right. There is a blue bubble that forms right there. Wow. That was nice. Very tall. And there you go. Premature again. We are here at the Gullfoss waterfall, which means good waterfall. And uh, it comes down from this river and falls into this crevasse that actually goes on for many, many miles. It can be up to 240 feet deep. Um, it's a very, very beautiful site. And over there is, uh, on the left you see, there is a, a green platform from the top. And those are people, of course, those little black figurines. Here we are a little closer and we can actually hear the roar of the water and see it going down into this deep ravine. Here's another view. We're going to get a little bit closer. I'm going to try to go over there. Okay, so here we are as close to the waterfall as we can possibly get. It's pretty impressive, especially uh, with this white wall in, in behind. Here we can see the lower fall a little bit and the river in which to, it descends into. Okay, so here we are on the edge of the small waterfall and we can see it fall down and then disappear there. This so we are here in a place called Thingvellir. This is a place where the Icelandic parliament met during the Viking times. It is also a giant fissure that separates the Eurasian plate from the American plate. And it literally pulls Iceland apart um, by about two centimeters per year. So that's about, um, about half an inch. So um, we're walking right through there and there's lots of earthquakes here because of that. Iceland has about 30 volcanic systems, they tell us, which means not just 30 volcanoes, but more than that. Um, and many of them are still active. How does it look, honey? <laughs> Windy. Definitely need a hat or earmuffs, gloves. It is quite cold, Scarf. yes. Here we have a great view of the fissure. We're actually standing in it. The wall on the right is the beginning of North America, the more North American plate. And on the left is the Eurasian plate. 
So we are standing practically in the middle between Europe and North America. So this is Iceland's largest lake. It is an inside uh, inland lake fed by these uh, glacier rivers. And we've got this beautiful landscape here of little coves and lakes. And we were just told that this is a very popular diving spot. In fact, right there, if you see this yellow dot, that's a tent where the divers change. And there's actually some people you can see right now that are getting ready to dive down into this little lake or pond. A little too cold for my taste. Here's a beautiful view that shows from the view from up here down into the fissure. Now this bridge that we just, they were standing here on that we see, this wasn't here a few years ago. This was actually part of the road and uh, somebody saw there was a little hole in the road and um, they came and they investigated it and they found out that the entire place under the road was washed out and this deep fissure had sprung up that was up to 30 meters deep starting here. And uh, so they took out the, the road and built this bridge instead. So uh, here in Iceland, anything can happen at any time.